Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We'll get started here in a few minutes. Uh, we'll see our um, attendee count if it will go up any uh, more. Please feel free to take a look at the forum that we're using today. There is a Q&A if you have questions. We have Trevor Burns with us today. He'll be kind of manning our Q&A section and we'll be answering those questions both in the chat and as well um, throughout the webinar. Hello, everyone. Looks like we're holding pretty steady with our 22 attendees, so we'll go ahead and get started so that everyone can get back to their busy days. Today, we're going to be going over the graduation report um, in NEO. This report uh, is due, we'll go over due dates, we'll go over um, all the uh, requirements of how students end up on this report. Um, I am Alexandra Cookson. I am the data quality trainer with the Madam's Health Desk. And joining me today is Trevor Burns. He is our data warehouse coordinator. Chad, uh, Trevor, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Yep, I'm the uh, education data warehouse coordinator, um, and I'll be here trying to answer questions that come through. All right, let's go ahead and get started then. Uh, before we get into this specific report, I wanted to give everyone kind of an update of upcoming reports and webinars. Um, in August, we have our edu main educator summit, which will be um, next Monday through Thursday at the Augusta Civic Center. We will be presenting there. That registration is now closed. Um, but if you are registered, we look forward to seeing you there. And then we have our summer trainings, which are August 3rd, the 14th through 17th, and then the 21st through the 24th. Registration for those is still open. They are throughout different locations around the state. Um, and we do have a virtual option as well, which will be on the 24th if you'd like to register for that one. The uh, 29th of August, we'll be doing a Synergy Enrollment webinar. All of our webinars are at 10 a.m. Um, this is gonna be kind of our series for the fall. So um, that will kind of kick it off. Today really is our kickoff, but then we have a big break. So Synergy Enrollments will be our real kickoff. Then in September, Alternate Economic Status Forum, we'll have a webinar for that on the 5th. Quarterly reporting will be on the 12th. Dropout reporting will be on the 19th. And then October 1 enrollment, which will be your EPS funding, that will be on the 26th of, of um, September. Right. Let's get into our resources for the current report that we're working with. On the Help Desk website, on the data reporting instructions page, you will find uh, the instructions for graduation certification. They're about, they're down a little ways. They're supposed to be in alphabetical order. They're a little bit off, but um, they are, it is toward the middle here. Graduation certification instructions will go through how to find the report, how to certify the report. Um, and if any questions come up about that certification, please feel free to contact the help desk. Uh, we'd be happy to help you. The purpose of this report is for districts to verify their graduation counts um, of students who have graduated from their um, high school institutes. And we use adjusted cohort graduation rate, which is basically the um, idea that the students who enter in um, ninth grade or throughout the year and get put into a cohort may not necessarily be the same students who exit the cohort at the end of the graduation period. Um, so it's adjusted to, to identify just those students who have graduated um, within the uh, time frame that they were supposed to um, on that last graduation date. Trevor, do you want to talk more about that? Yep, um, and to just go into that a little further, um, there's specific exit codes students can have, say at the end of the school year, that's saying the student transferred out of state or if they transferred to a private school, um, that expects us to not see future enrollments for the students. So those types of exits would end up pushing the student out of your cohort because they transferred out. Um, so that is some of the ways you can see students who were originally in your cohort come off of it. 
Um, same thing if the student decides to transfer to another district, say they're going from Bangor to Augusta, you'll see that student come off of the cohort for Bangor and then enter Augusta's cohort because they're now transferring into Augusta. So that's the whole concept of adjusting the cohort. Right, so you're only responsible for your students who are graduating within your school on the specific year um, of graduation. And the cohort is determined by their first entry into high school in Maine. So we'll get into that a little bit more later too. All LEAs with graduate uh, who are graduating high school students are required to complete this report. Um, it does go to the ESSA dashboard and um, also yeah, our data warehouse for state reporting. Um, so it is something that we'll see in those locations once it's reported. The dates for this report, so the report has been open since 7-1. It is due on 8-30. The reporting range is 8-16-22 uh, to 8-15-22. Students have until the 15th of August to complete their graduation requirements. The caveat to this is that any students who complete those requirements um, after 7-1, in order to be completed or to be considered in the correct cohort, need to be exited from Synergy in the 2022-2023 school year by 630. So they need to be exited with that graduation code. So they may be exited right now as an 03502 because they haven't completed their requirements. Let's say they're exited for 615. Um, you can just go back to that 615 date, update the code to graduate 01, uh, 01921, and that student will be on the correct report in the correct uh, cohort. So do not create a new enrollment within the 23-24 school year because that will not put them in the correct cohort. It will not show up on the graduation report. Yep. Um... And that, that whole catch date of um, up to 815, a lot of people describe them as their extended grads or summer graduates. Um, and yeah, it's mostly just to get the reporting lined up so they are counting as graduating in the correct year. So in um, the way the definition works is the student has up until 815 to be considered an on-time grad. So that's why if a student does meet those requirements by 815 we'll just have you go and update the exit that was put at the end of the year to make sure they were counted as a graduate for that year. Um, if the students say met those requirements on 816 you would be putting an enrollment in the following year. Um, I think that's all we have for dates. Um, let's go on. So locating the report in NEO you would go into the NEO um, login, log into NEO, uh, student data, student reports, and then the graduation report. If you do not have credentials to log into NEO, you will need to complete, your superintendent will need to complete on your behalf a NEO access request form, and that will be submitted to the um, help desk, and we will process that for you. In order for new staff members, so if you are hiring someone who will be doing student reports through uh, for this coming school year, they will need to have an active staff assignment in NEO staff before we can process that access request. Um, so if you do not have access to NEO, you will um, need to have um, an active staff assignment. That's just our way of verifying that someone is working in that the person is working in the district um, and it's not um, someone random. So just make sure that you have that access, uh, uh, have that staff assignment in before requesting access. In NEO on the main home screen, when you first log in, you'll see student data. Once you click student data, you'll come into the student reports section. So we'll select student reports. And you come to the list of reports that um, are available for student data. All of these reports are really um, aggregate counts of what's put into Synergy. Everything in here gets updated within Synergy. So if you see anything in any of these reports, including the graduation port, uh, report, you need to make sure that you're updating that data in Synergy, waiting for it to upload, and then looking for that change. 
If you scroll down, you'll see that the graduation report is kind of in the middle here as well. Uh, so once you select view report, it will bring you into your certification report here. You can see here that um, you have your organization, you have your completers, your four year, five year and six year cohorts. Um, your completers are any students within this year who have completed their graduation requirements. Um, so that could be students within the five year cohort and it could be students within the four year cohort. So you can see here, for example, there were 10 graduates in the four year cohort. All of them graduated, 100% of them. In the five year cohort, there were nine students who have completed their requirements. One of these 12 students may are two of those 12 students or one of those 12 students may have been in the five year or six year cohorts. So the completers are made up of all of the students within um, each of the cohorts, whereas each cohort will go through each individual group of students who are graduating. Trevor, do you want to add any more on to that or? Um, I think you covered it. I'm just responding to a question in the chat right now. OK. Um, so this is where the superintendent will come in and cert uh, certify the report. Um, this should be reviewed by data specialists. Anyone who's involved with graduation data should be, um, um, you know, review should review this before it is certified. Um, and so making sure that everyone has had their eyes on it and then certified and sent to the DOE. Um, that's where this all happens. Um, so we'll take a look in each of the reports. Um, so, whoop, not working. OK, um, the completers report, you can see here that there are students within this report who were in the 2022 and the 2021 cohorts. So that's where two students had come from two other cohorts to make it the 12 completers, whereas there were only 10 students in the um, current cohort who completed. Um, so you'll see all students within this completers report, even if they were not within the same cohort. And then yep. you have your four year graduates. These are your students who entered grade four, uh, grade nine four years ago and are now uh, ready to graduate. They're considered their four year um, expectation track. And so these this report is going to list just those four year students. This next report is going to list your five year report students. And you can see that the student here um, in the 2022 cohort, this student would have graduated in 2022 in September, which puts them in the current school year 2022-2023 rather than the cohort year 2022. So that's why you see them in this report. They did not meet the 815 cutoff last year. They are now in the new school year. And just to add one quick thing to that, um, when you uh, when you guys are viewing the completers report, um, just note that everyone in that list is a graduate. Um, it's a list of your all your grads for that year. However, when you enter the four and fifth year report, um, it includes all the students from that cohort, not just the ones that graduated. So if you want to find who specifically graduated or if you want to check to make sure this specific student was marked as a graduate, um, when you look at this table, that graduation date field um, is how you'll tell if the student graduated or not. If that is blank, that means they were not marked as a graduate or identified as one. But if there is a date in that field, um, you can know that they were identified as a graduate on that day. Yes, great point, Trevor. And that is something also to keep in mind, like as you're checking these reports and verifying your counts for graduates. Um, if you do see a student who's marked with a blank in the graduation date field, um, and they were a graduate, that is something that you would want to go back into Synergy and update their status, um, their graduation status. So um, making sure that those um, are all correct is really important. Um, but yes, you will see blanks in this report if the student was ex was anticipated to graduate in the 2022 school year or the 2023 school year, whichever cohort you're looking at, um, you will see those blanks in those cohorts if they did not graduate. So then you also have your six year cohort. So you can see that this student graduated this year. 
uh, within this 2022-2023 school year, but they were expected to graduate in 2021. So just to emphasize those. And then a few quick notes about this report. So cohorts are identified by the first enrollment in a main high school. So if a student uh, was enrolled, their first enrollment in a main high school was grade, uh, in grade nine in the school year 1920, um, then we would expect their graduation year to be cohort 2023. The same is true that if a student enters a main high school for the first time in grade 11, in the school year 21-22, then they would have the same cohort because their um, grade level put them in grade 11 and expects them to graduate in 2023 as well. So initial entry into synergy um, with the correct grade level at the high school level is very important to determine cohort. So making sure that those are correct. If a student is not appearing on the correct cohort list, it may be because of a grade level um, entry that may have been incorrect. And I think I saw this question. Um, so if a student is awarded the COVID diploma or the DOE diploma, that student needs to be exited with 01921. That is the graduate code. The only um, code, the only exit code that is pulled into this graduate report is the 01921, which is the graduated with baccalaureate um, or equivalent degree. Um, so that one, that is the code that needs to be used even if a student has received the DOE or di COVID diplomas. Um, so those would need to be updated. I think that's it. I don't see any new questions that have come in. Trevor, do you have anything to add? Um, just to note on the um, DOE diplomas, one of the common things that have come up in the past, um, our schools ask about when they exit their students to adult ed or a, a secondary workforce program, things like that. Um, those don't get considered as graduates. Um, those do get flagged as dropouts. Um, if the student continues to meet our definition of a dropout once they receive that exit. So just know that, yeah, it is specifically this DOE diploma exit we are looking for. Right, and the DOE diploma exit is the same as a regular graduate exit, um, a 1921. So making sure that all students who you who should be reported as graduates are you are identified as gra as exiting in the 2022-2023 school year with that exit code. Um, this is something also we've really we've had really good um, feedback with our. Um, exiting unexited student enrollments. All students need to be exited from Synergy in the um, end of the school year. And so uh, we've had some really good um, response with that. We have just a few places that are that um, have not exited, but it's really easy to exit them as 03502, not enrolled eligible to return, making sure that those codes for those graduates is 01921 is gonna be really critical to making sure that your graduation rates are accurate. Um, so you can't just exit everyone with that 03502, not enrolled, eligible to return. Your, your 12th graders who have graduated will need to be updated to graduates in that exit status. So there was a question in the chat about um, students who graduate within three years. Um, they do show up on your four-year graduate report. So they will, they will be there. I think, oh, we have a couple more questions. Yep. Um, one is related to uh, looking, um, viewing a student's assigned cohort um, before mm -hmm. they get to this report. Um, and I do know that before you certify this report, um, you can look when you view the report, you'll see all the students cohorts right on that report. And if a student you're expecting to see there isn't there, um, there's a good chance they probably have an incorrect cohort. But she uh, did mention uh, getting it added to the attending student report. I do know that's not there. Do you know if it, there's a place in Synergy where Synergy displays it to them, Allie? 
The only thing that I can think of is that when you, I, I don't think there's any report that you can pull, but I know that when you go into the enrollment history for a student, you can see when their um, enrollments were and what grade levels they were, 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 they were within each year. Usually that's where we start when we're investigating one of these scenarios, um, is we'll go in and look at the enrollment history and see you know, were there grade levels, were there two ninth grade entries, for example, um, someone may have accidentally added a ninth grade entry when the student was an eighth grader, um, that can on the back end cause an issue. Um, and you may not see it there if it was fixed, because once that entry is in, that is the cohort. So if you notice something like that, um, in the enrollment history and you go in and change the grade level, call the help desk and make sure that that student is in the correct um, cohort because um, you just want to make sure that that didn't interfere with any of that. Uh, so just changing the grade level may not be enough. Uh, you may need to call the help desk to ensure that that cohort is accurate. Um, one question came in. Uh, I assume you'll cover non-01921 exit codes. To clarify, students whose exit codes were determined to be inaccurate during our review of summer review of data. So um, I believe uh, this person's asking about updating exit codes that are wrong besides just graduation exit codes. Yeah, um, so if you have students who were exited incorrectly in Synergy for the 2022-2023 school year, you have access to that. Um, until like the 15th of August to go in and update that. So you can go in and update those codes until that point. And then when we roll over to the 2023-2024 school year in Synergy, that will no longer be available. So um, if you know of students who were not exited with the 01921 and they need to be updated, you will need to do that as soon as possible, or once the um, school year rolls over in Synergy, you need to call the help desk to get that updated. That's a really great question. And I think on that note, I'll go to the next slide. The next slide is about contact information. So if you have any questions about um, your report, so if you need to call the help desk, uh, here's the phone number for the help desk and then the email address meadows.helpdesk at maine.gov. If you're looking for opportunities to do trainings, like if you want to sign up for our summer trainings um, or if you have questions about summer trainings um, or if you want to schedule a one on one training or have new staff coming on, um, then you can contact myself. Um, my phone number is here, 446-3897, and then you can also email me, um, alexandra.cookson at maine.gov, and I will get something scheduled as soon as possible. My schedule in August is a little bit packed with the Educator Summit and the trainings in the next couple weeks, so we may need to look a little bit further out um, to schedule trainings. It may be the last week of August or in September before we can get training scheduled. Um, so just be aware of that if you are looking to utilize that opportunity. Um, um, just had a quick question yeah. come in. Um, should we use the 01907, I assume that's transfer out to uh, the same LEA exit code yes. at the end of the year or only during the school year? Yes, you would only use that during the school, during year. The school year. Yep, yep. at the end of the year, you would be using the not enrolled eligible to return. Correct, so if you have, um, for example, in my old district, we had fourth graders that were moving up to fifth grade and they were going to a different school. Um, the end of the year code for that student would be 03502 in fourth grade, even though they're going to a different school in the fall. So they um, that code for transferring within the district is only for if a student moves, if you have two elementary schools, for example, and the student moves to the other elementary school in the district. That's when you would use that code. Oh, the 01907. I think we'll leave it open for a couple more questions for just a couple more minutes. 
Um, but once we start to see people drop off, um, we will uh, kind of close things out. So Ellie, Ellie, I just saw a quick question come in. Ellie's uh, local education um, administration. So your uh, local school, your at RSU, your district, SAU, uh, it's interchangeable with district, LEA. Paula, I'll, I'll see what I can do about adding to the data dictionary for that. Um, I'll get back to you about adding that code for the students transferring within the school year to a different district. Great point. more questions came in. Yeah, I just answered them. Okay. Um, did you get the uh, data dictionary one too? Yeah, I, okay. we may not, I, I'll see what I can do about that one was the answer to that one. <laughs> All right, I think we will probably drop off here rather quickly, but thank you all for joining us today. Welcome back. I know we're still talking about the previous school year, but um, the new school year is coming and I hope that everything is going well in preparation for that. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at the help desk or give me a call. Um, I will do my best to get back to you uh, as soon as possible. So thank you all very much for joining us once again, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone.